All right, welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is your boy Luzu Goyafele, aka DJ Mzugwana, aka the filmmaker. Um, welcome to our first episode, guys. Um, the show is called The Report Card. Um, I feel like we don't talk much about the entertainment industry in terms of business, uh, where it comes from, how we started. Um, and I feel like today we need to talk about the, the relationship between um, the, the role it's, it plays into the society and also the role it plays um, with our government. So today our conversation is basically talking about what's happening in the entertainment industry uh, before COVID and after COVID and, and during the establishment of the whole thing. So today I want to go deep and um, I want us to have a proper, proper conversation and because sometimes when we talk about the entertainment, when we talk about filmmaking, television, we always talk about what's happening now. And I feel like this is the show for you. We need to go back in time. We need to remember where it all started. We need to know how it all started. Um, remember, there's also a history of whites um, and then there's history of blacks. So we don't need to mix these two. We need to know the foundation. Uh, so this is for the show for you. If you want to comment, if you want to also be part of the show. Um, on the next episode, I'll make sure that I have a guest. It's either an actor, musician, um, anyone who has played a role in our industry. So make sure uh, you listen. And also, if you have anything, just follow on YouTube. Um, DYR deeply rooted and also you can go to Lelako Productions Facebook YouTube um, Instagram page so that's where you find us so let me just give you a background of the show man because it's important but legally because others are gonna ask questions what why because there are many postcards popping up and I'm realizing what everyone is talking about the same thing sort of and um, we're not really talking about what's happening in the film industry and television industry. Since I'm the person who's working in the industry, I've done radio before, uh, I understand how important and the role we play as artists and, and the role uh, of us having to give out in, uh, communication and information throughout the world, man. So, so the show is basically, it's a mi mixture of tradition, cultural music, um, we're talking artist biographies, we do reviews on current issues. Uh, it's either political, social, um, around Africa and the world. So we'll also engage with you guys uh, as you are sitting at home. You can just send your comment and tell us what you want us to talk about or who you want us to talk about. So three things we're going to be talking about today is what role is entertainment plays in our society and in government. And then we're going to talk about the book review, which is I have here. Uh, it's a book that I'm currently busy reading. Uh, it's Robert Sobukwe. I'm just going to give you a snippet about it. It's up to you. You go home and read and get to know more about your politicians. And the third thing we're going to be talking about, which is our last segment for today's show, we're going to be talking about, um, we're not really going to be talking about, we're going to be remembering our heroes. Um, we're going to remember the current and also the past, because sometimes we forget and only celebrate when our heroes die, and then we feel like we need to say something. So we're going to go um, on both the, uh, the live and also the dead. Sorry to say dead, but yeah, that's it is. Uh, you are dead, you are dead. But So we're going to be talking about that later on. So let me just um, talk about, guys, the role that we as artists play. Um, if I'm saying you're an artist, it means you're a creative person. Uh, it's either you're on camera, it's either you're an actor, it's either you're... Because sometimes I feel like politicians are also artists because they are playing a role. Sometimes uh, people get to mix up politics and personal lives. I'm going to make an example about uh, Malema. Um, people will always thinking that he's a hardcore, he's an SO, he's, he's, he's very opinionated, he doesn't know where he stands. But for me, I feel like we need to understand that the guy is playing a character. It's his job. When you are going to a KFC and you're becoming a, a, a teller or you're a security guard, you are playing a role there. At home, you, not, you are not a, politi or a, a security guard. You don't go to your wife and say you are a security person. So let's just talk about that. Um, and I think that we need to understand the role of politicians. We need to understand the role of artists. 
And you know, when I say the role of artist entertainment in our government, in our society, the kind of stories we tell every day are very important. Because remember, whatever you see on picture, and sometimes they say a picture will say a thousand words. So a kid will see a picture and they have their own ideas. An adult will see a picture or a moving picture and they will have their own ideas. So sometimes we need to be careful of what uh, we put out there. So when I say what is the role of entertainment, what is the role of us as creative, what is our responsibility for the masses out there who watch our shows, who watch the stories? This is my opinion and this is my view. You have also a right to have your own opinion at home. Uh, you can decide on your own. And I'm not trying to impose my ideas on you. It's up to you to take whatever you think you can take. So entertainment, um, this is where now uh, we talk of TV, we talk of radio, we talk uh, now currently we talk of podcast, um, we talk radio, we talk newspaper, we talk magazines. But I want to talk specifically which, with what I know, which is TV, film, uh, radio, podcast, and I'm going to talk about that much. Um, we have a GDP in our country where we can get to know how much we're making for our government. And yearly, we make over billions, billions through advertisement, through um, American or European or African countries coming to South Africa, shooting, doing adverts, making business. So we do have a role, a huge role. And you know, if you can check in America, um, they make their money most in entertainment. They make a lot and lot and lot of money because remember now Hollywood is a big thing in America. Um, and they also use artists, they use actors, they use musicians. Whenever there's a campaign, a president is about to campaign. If there's a Kanye West in your campaign, you are guaranteed that most people are going to follow. But not now. It's, I think it's a bad example because no, no one likes Kanye West at, the, at this point in time. But um, I'll rather say Jay-Z. Imagine Jay-Z and Beyonce when they were running for Beyonce, I mean for Obama. Uh, a lot of people were emotional. Uh, they didn't think about politics. They just voted because of Jay-Z was trending and, 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 and actually supporting Obama. Beyonce was supporting Obama. I mean, most artists were supporting Obama and the votes were there for everyone, and he, he won because some of what we see as idols and role models were also following in, 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 in the footsteps of saying, let's just vote for this guy because he's the big guy and he can, make the, uh, he can bring the change. So it's very important. You don't need to think about entertainment in a narrow way. It's way, very broad. So also in South Africa, and I also ask myself questions, how does artists play a role? And I remember when EFF was coming through, a lot of artists, uh, some of the artists were afraid to talk about the, the, politi uh, the political party at, the, at that point in time. Uh, I remember Ifani performed, the major league guys were performing when these guys were launching um, EFF. And most of the artists didn't support that because they felt like they can't betray ANC. But remember now, after five years um, or four years or three years, um, came through EFF and they were conquering and they were coming and then they took most of the young people's votes. And now most artists started to, to support the movement and they were not afraid and they were no longer hiding themselves they were supporting EFF and they were showed, uh, showing their uh, support you can go to Twitter now you'll see TJ Fresh tweeting about Malema saying happy birthday Casper uh, everyone now is not afraid to talk about it but in the beginning artists were afraid because they thought that maybe they were betraying ANC and ANC will also on their campaigns um, on whenever there's a function around ANC they will use artists to also be part of the um, voting and, and trying to get as many votes as they are. So it's very important to understand that artist has an influence. So even the young ones who are growing up, I mean, I used to watch uh, karate when I grew up, Jet Li, I used to watch Jackie Chan. And I remember with most of my friends, we would go out and kick ourselves because we thought we were Jack Lee, uh, we thought we were Jackie Chan. So it's very important to understand that whatever you see on picture, it does play a role and it does affect your mind. Uh, what I see now that is happening, and I'm not going to mention any, no, uh, any names uh, in terms of what role are we playing in, uh, entertainment-wise. There are channels that are popping up and they are a mess when it comes to my view. 
because they don't portray us as um, growing and moving forward. Uh, if you want to talk about um, our struggles and also our stereotypes, 90% or 99% of our time on radio, uh, TV, I mean, where are we going as black people? Because we don't want to see our side. I, I understand some people will say it's boring to always see a, a, a hero, a black hero. It's boring to have these serious stories. Uh, we want to laugh. But what I'm saying is we need to balance. We need to have both the stereotype and also we need to have both um, the positive. Because at the end of the day, when Sibuga TV and we see ourselves, we get to love who we are. I mean, I'm going to make an example in America. Uh, when we watch movies, you remember that the first black person that you see on screen is the first person that will die. It's either they chopping off their head or they shoot them in the head. But I remember all the movies, there was this thing which was a pattern on every movie I watched. A black person just come into a scene and they are the first to be killed. But it changed over and over the, um, the time goes. So we need to remember that every time we do that, every time we put ourselves... Uh, on a lower uh, scale of things when it comes to movies, when it comes to radio. And in terms of when you talk about radio, the only thing we hear, we hear people fighting, we hear people disagreeing. Uh, we, it seems like we can't agree on issues because some shows, some talk shows, you will listen. And the people that are calling in will fight and you will, you will ask yourself, why are we fighting? Because of we're fighting for the same cause. And having different ideas doesn't mean that now you need to take it personal. I might have a different opinion, you might have a different opinion, but it means somewhere, somewhere, we need to have a backbone and say, we don't cross this line. Because I know other races, they have a line that they don't cross. You don't talk about rape all the time on TV. You don't see them um, stabbing each other on TV all the time. You, so you don't see them cheating on each other all the time on TV. So we need to have a balance. We need to have a balance in order for us black people to grow and move forward. So I'm just talking about the role in general, and we're going to break it down on different episodes as I bring you um, guests so that we can break down whatever I've just mentioned now. So I'm just giving you an overall sort of a pilot of an episode so that you can decide on your own and also you can take part and tell us which guy you want to see or which actor, which musician you want to see having this discussion. Because sometimes when we talk about entertainment, we want to have interviews and we talk about uh, alcohol, we talk about women, but we forget um, um, talking about the real stuff, the politics. Um, because currently, as I'm talking to you, there are guys who are sleeping uh, at National Arts Council offices, fighting, saying that artists need to be respected, saying that government to, to need to take artists seriously. Stop using us whenever you have campaigns. Stop using us whenever you want uh, support from artists. And this is my question, and I want you to sit down at home to think about it. Ubegala e camera in front of the president, is about to make a speech, and he needs to reach as many as uh, numbers as he can in South Africa. He needs to reach, uh, his weight needs to go all over the world. What do you use for him to be heard in Ghana, for him to be heard in Zimbabwe, for him to be heard uh, in, in England, for him to be heard in America, for him to be in, uh, in Jamaica? What do we use? You need a, a, an entertainment person there. You need a camera crew, you need a camera operator. Without those people, he might as well uh, sit at home and speak to himself. Because no one will know and no one will hear his story. So they need to understand how important it is for us to be taken seriously in the industry. So at the same time, I understand uh, it could be the matter of the government doesn't really know what artists want. Because let's talk about um, soccer. Let's talk about sport. If you go to a um, government office, you know which office to go to. If you want to talk about um, a, an MEC of sorts about sport, you know which door to open. And I understand in, in, in us, in terms of artists, we go to arts department and you ask around, even themselves, they don't know what artist needs uh, rights are and they just think that office is for um just making money and one thing i've realized over the years is that the same art department uh, i mean at um the de uh, department uh, offices will also have uh, 
an issue with proposals that come from artists because sometimes other artists don't even know business side of what they want to do and you take your proposals there and you find that people artists need to be taught how to do business they need to be taught how to uh, write proper pa papers uh, for you to get uh, the funding you want so it actually goes on both sides sometimes as much as the government will want to support a uh, artist don't know um, the proper way of uh, communicating with these departments. But most cases, 80% of the time, even our own government doesn't know how to approach entertainment industry. So we just need to talk about that. We need to talk to our government. We need to talk to the um, artists themselves. We need to talk to the entertainment industry themselves. So this is the foundation and the platform for us to go further so that we can hear both sides of government and, and, and the other side of uh, artists. So as we go on, as the show progresses or um, get more episodes, we're going to have to talk more on this issue. So let me just leave that issue alone for now. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, about it on the next episode. And we're going to explore more on these ideas. Remember we said the show is about tradition. Uh, when I say tradition, I mean we're different. We have like 11 languages official in South Africa, which is there's more which are not counted. Um, so we need to talk about that those issues also. We call, we're going to talk about cultural music, um, artist biographies, talking about the books, uh, review. Uh, we're going to be talking about current and political issues, social issues. Um, so it's very important that you stick on the show. I just want us to jump over and do a book review. So this is a segment where we just talk about any book. It's either your favorite artist book, political book, uh, entertainment book, whoever you feel like you want us to review. Uh, or maybe you are looking for a book, you are looking to read something. Uh, we're going to give you ideas. I'm going to draft down a list of books which I've read in the past. Maybe you might be interested to get to know more. We're going to talk about directors because um, some directors don't even read books and there are quite a number of books and um, there are actors who don't read books but there are quite a number of actors who have written autobiographies so today uh, we're going to review our main man uh, mr robert Sobukwe, who was a very um, outspoken leader in back in the days uh, as a young man he was involved in the anc he grew up in the anc but there were ideas that it is it didn't agree with with the um, uh, previous uh, presidency. So he ended up breaking off from uh, the ANC and the a uh, Youth League and decided to open his own party. Uh, so this thing of breakaway has been there for a while. Malema is not the first person to break away from political party. Same, uh, which is ANC. And there are quite a number of leaders who were part of a a a ANC Youth lead, uh, uh, um, I mean, League around about the early 20s, the early 30s, the early 40s, um, like um, the um, Inkata Freedom Party, uh, the president, I won't mention name, he was also a young man at the time. He also was part of ANC. He also broke away and started the Inkata Freedom Party back in the days. But now let's stick on the book here, which was written by Benjamin Bob Grant. Um, yeah, I have issues uh, which I feel like when I read the book, I didn't really enjoy because uh, I understand that Usobuwe started his own party, which was Pan-African, which changed to PAC, which is Pan-African Congress. So at the time when he went out, encouraged everyone to go out and say no to passes, so that, because remember back in the days, during the apartheid times, uh, they have to carry passes in town. If you didn't have your pass, you will be arrested. Um, sometimes the police will just beat you up and you go home uh, and they will tell you, make sure that next time you bring it, you don't just go around. So times were tough at the time. You couldn't just walk freely anyway. So he came and spoke to, and, I mean, spoke to his guys um, and then they decided what they need to go on the streets uh, and then say no to pass, no more. No one, no one is going to carry a pass. Uh, a pass at the time, uh, Babeti, there was a Tom Pass. <laughs> so the name Tompas uh, came from the fact that black people were rejecting, they didn't like it. Um, so they ended up calling it Tompas because of they feel like 
it was dumb for them to carry that and they didn't agree on it so i mean africa now it it came out and they will say at the end of the day it's a dumbass so when i read the book i am i love the fact that before usubigo was arrested he went to school he went to university uh, he went to the eastern cape where uh, most of uh, like zuma went to um mandela went to study and he also one was one of the most most intelligent guys who were um, more of supporters of black consciousness so when we speak of black consciousness it's about loving who you are it's about loving your skin it's about loving your language it's about loving your neighbor it's about loving your own kind um and then they were pushing that agenda that as much as south africa was changing we were moving with time but at the end of the day we must not forget that we are black and we must not forget that we need to take pride on who we are because once you lose who you are you tend to uh, don't have a proper direction as you move forward so he's one of the people who were very advocating and outspoken about the fact that you need to love who you are and remember at that time it was not easy to talk about being black because um, africaners were just killing everyone they were just fighting anyone who was standing up and trying to encourage other blacks in saying we need to fight back so he came during that time and he studied and went to school and he finished school and he was a lecturer at vets uh, for some time and also he was a lecturer um at a high school he was teaching language i mean african language so i can uh, to be specific he was teaching zulu though he was khosa so what i found amazing about the book after he was arrested and went to robin island um the conversation now changes the tone of the book changes because now benjamin is more he becomes a hero <laughs> in the book he I feel like Sobugwe is no longer a hero because now Benjamin is talking about the fact that he used to buy clothes for him and, and he buys books for him. He was the one who was taking care of him while he was in prison. And I feel like if you are writing an autobiography and you are writing about somebody else, you shouldn't take the power away from them. As much as he was doing all of that, but uh, you still need to respect the fact that you are writing and you are talking about this person. So most of the stuff when um, he's in Robin Island, he feels like he, I feel like he he became a hero. Um, and then he doesn't say a lot about other presidents who went and came from other parties who supported him when he was in prison. So I don't want to talk and spoil much about the book, but this is my view. This is how I feel. He actually, for me, he he, he didn't actually bring it uh, the much. Uh, I mean the what i feel he should have done as a writer because if you are a writer and you are writing about somebody else i think the first thing that you need to do is give respect to whoever yes i understand that you were helping them through the hard times and the tough times but i want to know more about him when he was in jail what was happening to him how did he cope how did he fight back i understand that you were writing letters in between a uh, because of you guys you had to have a, a communication but at the same time, I feel like you should have told me more about him and um, the experience he went through. Because I know that most of these guys were sleeping naked on the floor. Some of them didn't eat for days. Some of them started um, keeping themselves occupied by singing songs. Um, some of them were fighting back and some of them were killed in jail for fighting back. So I wanted to know more about that. As much as he highlighted some of the stuff they I feel like he became a hero more than anything. So if you want to know more about Robert Sobukwe, please go and buy the book uh, and read for yourself. You can also go to Google, check for yourself, um, and you will get to know more about Robert Sobukwe. Uh, and guys, to know about our heroes, because at the end of the day, if you don't know anything about who was fighting for you in order for you to be where you are today, um, there's always going to be a conflict of who you are where you come from and where you're going because ours you don't know anyone um okulwele wakwenza ukuthuba khona la ukhona namhlanje so kubalekile wazi and make sure you sit down and read because i know but uthi umntu omnyama ukuze umfihlele imali but kumele uyifihle inside the book 
because <laughs> they say we are lazy to read. So they will always make sure that and make that joke of if you have a cash, put it in the book. No one will find it, especially a black person, because we don't like to read. So that's our book review for the week. And I hope you at home, you are sitting there. Um, yeah, you got to learn. And uh, let's encourage each, each other, guys, uh, in reading. Because when you read, you, your vocab becomes better. And you get to remember words when you are writing or you are talking to someone. I'm not talking about English only. You can, I mean, also read Zulu books. You can read Kosa books. You can read Swana. You can read any other language. I'm not really uh, encouraging you to know more about English. It's all about just reading whatever book you have. And make sure you go. And you know what's so uh, amazing about books? Uh, I find that whenever it comes to our autobiographies, uh, when it comes to something real, something that, that speaks to us, we don't have any other languages. You'll find that this book, um, it was never translated to any other language, which is something that I would prefer. If you're writing a book, uh, if there's money enough, um, can we try and translate these books as much as we can? Because you'll find the Bible, it's, it's translated in many languages, Portuguese, German, uh, there's a Tswana book, there's a Zulu book, there's a Kosa book. So... My question is now, if we have a history book, we're talking about history. Why can't we have a Zulu um, uh, um, version of the same book? Uh, what don't we have a Tswana? Same version. So that, I mean, young kids can be able to say, because we are proud of who we are, we can start reading in our own languages. All right, guys, I'm going to close that segment on that note. Read, read, read. Because when you read, you never know. There might be a million inside this book. <laughs> I don't know. So by picking up a book you might get yourself a million because they say hide it in the book and then a black person will never find it. Now, I want to talk about a celebration and a, when we're celebrating or when we remember our heroes because at the end of the day, guys, as much as we're going to be talking about the current heroes, um, we need to remember who planted a root in our minds back in the days because I surely somehow, somehow each and every person of Bugile Manje was watching the show. Uh, there's someone who in your mind inspires you every day. And whenever you think about this person, you feel happy, you feel joy, and they make you want to move forward and, and want to challenge the world. Um, because at the end of the day, without having anyone inspiring you, uh, for me, it's hard to understand with how do you move forward. But you need to have, it's either a musician, an actor, politician, um, doctor, whoever. Somehow, somehow you need to have a, a someone that is going to inspire you. So today we're talking about our heroes or our heroines because both females and males, they played part during apartheid time. They also played part during the now time. And I'm talking about entertainment industry. So today I want to talk about Umama. There's a picture behind me that you see. Uh, Umamira Makeba, she was in Burkina Faso at this moment, uh, at this point in time uh, with one of the guys I respect the most, the um, past president of Burkina Faso. Female figure um, who has played a role both political, she was an actor, uh, she had a cameo role in a movie. Uh, when she came back from overseas, she came and people were very excited. The whole of Africa was very happy. Um, she's done a lot for government. She has done a lot for politics. And she's done a lot in music. So today I feel like we need to open up on a big note. Because I want you guys to sit at home and ask yourself who's next. But today, um, I'm very honored to be talking about this mother. Uma uh, Manji, Wonkumutu Yamazi, all over Africa, all over the world. Um, if you talk about Uma Malo, you will know who I'm talking about. Before I go to her, let me do this. Um, there's an interesting story that I heard, uh, which I didn't know about Uma Malo. So these guys who are fighting, who are sleeping at National Arts Council in Joburg, uh, one of the guys was talking uh, about how we, the role of uh, artists in South Africa, uh, why the government doesn't understand us. So she made an example uh, about one of uh, the heroes that we, 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 we always praise. Um, she spoke about Umama, which I'm going to actually reveal the name. She said um, Umama was traveling across the world 
And at that time, she was doing a job for ANC. She was having notes. Uh, she will go, uh, we'll see her with Belofante, um, who is this guy he was, she was marrying into. I'm going to give the name later. Um, and also she went to Burkina Faso. She went to Nigeria. She went to Ghana. She went to Morocco. All of this time, I didn't know. I thought she was performing. She was just getting gigs. Only to find out when this sister of mine talking and, 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 and during the National Arts Council um, um, the battle. She was saying that um, government Ramaphosa, you need to know how important these artists play, uh, the role they played during uh, apartheid times. So Umama, which I'm talking about, she was one of the guys who was sending messages from ANC, from Abu Tata, um, uh, or Mandela during the, uh, those times. Uh, she was the pillar she was the one who was making sure that all these other presidents uh, 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 across Africa were listening and they were taking note of what was happening in our country at the time. So she, was a relate, uh, she related a lot of messages between um, government during that time in 90, uh, before 94 and also she was relating messages and talking to these presidencies. In America, Europe, uh, she was the one who was um, advocating for peace and begging these countries, these presidents, to support the struggle, to make sure that um, we, as black people, have the freedom we are crying for. So let me just introduce you to none other than Umamu Miriam Makeba, Abanya Bambiza Umama Africa. And I have that. Um, there was someone who was claiming to be Mama Africa, and I'm going to give you the name as I'm closing the show, who wanted to take over and said, I'm also Mama, Ma <laughs> Mama Africa. So there's a battle now of um, young women who are coming up claiming that name. And I mean, it's very sensitive to just call yourself a Mama Africa and knowing that uh, there's a person who also got that name through their work they've done, both in music and politics. So I'll give you the name, just remind me. So um, I'm very happy to be talking about Umama uh, Miriam Makeba, who was born on 4 March 1932, and um, she passed away in uh, 2008, uh, 9 November. Uh, Umama, she was a singer, songwriter, and actress. Uh, she was in United Nations uh, goodwill ambassador, ambassador. She was a uh, civil rights. Uh, she was uh, associated with musical genres, including Afro pop, e jazz, uh, world music. So for me, there's a, an, an album I liked. Um, I used to listen to as a young boy. Um, she, she actually, she's one of the people too who was very proud of her own language. She didn't compromise. Yes, she had some songs in her album, but 90% of her album was um, her own language, which was Iskosa, and also she will mix Isizulu. Uh, some of the songs she will speak, um, she will sing in Tswana. Some of the songs she will speak, because um, she knew how to speak the other African languages, like Nigeria. Uh, she knew how to speak their own language, like Senegal. She knew to, how to speak some of the, she knew how to speak Portuguese. So she was very multi-talented. Not just a singer, not just a politician. She she understood how important it is to know the languages. You see, this whole segments that we did, guys, it links, it's a chain. We need to know the role and we need to review the history, the autobiographies, and it links also to becoming a hero. Because for you to be a hero, you need to start somewhere and end where you are today. So, oh, Mama, actually, I remember when I watched a, an interview, she was so sad. She was telling her own story, and what caught me in the story was the fact that she says, you know, um, it was so sad before she passed away. It was so sad that, uh, I mean, everybody knew Upata Pata, and every, in the world, everyone was singing Upata Pata. So now, when she had to come back, because remember when we got I Freedom in 94, some of the guys couldn't come in just at that time because they were not allowed to come in. They were still in exile. So she's one of the person who was in exile, and um, Mandela was now free, and everyone was happy. Uh, everyone was like, "I now we turn, we we turning a new leaf." So Umama was invited also to to come and perform in one of the functions. Now remember when Ubabu Mandela came, 
there were celebrations. He needed to go out and talk to the people. He needed to encourage people. Uh, he started selling the idea of peace. He started selling the idea of social cohesion. So during one of uh, the functions that the ANC, ANC did, it was more of uh, VIPs. All the leaders all over the world, some leaders coming from Africa, were in to celebrate with him. Uh, I think it was an in inauguration of, of the president. I can't remember which function is, it is. Now she's telling a story of people were excited to come back. She was also excited to come back. And then when she came back, what's so said, and this is what happened to her, was the fact that she hoped to perform um, during Utatu Mandela is in inauguration uh, in in ninety four when Utatu Mandela was becoming a president. Simbega city again. Now you are. Um, we all agree that you are a president of the country. So she looked forward to perform in that function, and it was so sad when she actually said in this interview that she never got invited to perform in that big function. And also, she was not allowed around the perimeters of where Utata was given the power to become a president. And she always asked herself, why did that happen? Because of she was one person that was a big figure during that time in music, I mean, politics everywhere. But she was so saddened by the fact that she was not invited to come and, and, and perform. So, I mean, I was like, for her not to be invited in a big moment, because she played a role, it was so sad. Because after that, she was like, now, I think, I mean, that, this is my opinion in terms of how she felt, is that I'm not appreciated. Why would I go out, fight, invite, talk to people, and try to bring peace for black people, but on a big day, I was not invited. And I, I find that confusing. I really find that confusing. But anyways, we know about bashing anyone. It's just that it was interesting for me to find out that um, one of our biggest figures was put on power and our female, our biggest African Mama Africa was not invited to perform. Maybe they have their own reasons, I don't know, but I find it amusing and very um, surprising. So remember now, guys, uh, Umama was, um, was born uh, with family, your mom was Swazi, and then you know, a closer parent. So she was both Swazi and closer at the same time. And then she was involved um, with the Manhattan Brothers around the 50s. Um, there was a group also called the Sky Lex. Um, she performed a mixture of jazz, traditional African melodies at the time, uh, during those years of 1950s. And during that time, Uso Bugwe was still, uh, I think it was in varsity at this time, when Uma Mere Mageba was involved in these uh, drama groups. And then um, she was very, 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 uh, around about 59, uh, she was very uh, popular in the Western uh, music uh, cycle. And then she had a brief, a brief, a brief role um, with apartheid film. You know, she was not only a singer, she was an actor. Uh, the film was called Come Back Africa. You can just go to YouTube. Uh, you can go to a library and check if you can find that. It's called Come Back to Africa. She's also had a brief, brief um, cameo role there. So she's known, I mean, all over the world, New York. She's known London. She's known, as I said before, Ghana. She's known in Zimbabwe, Mozambique. She's known all over the world. That's why we call her Mama Africa. I'm not um, going to dwell too much on what she did um, about her background, but all I want to do in the show is to actually have this segment where we celebrate our own and i mean to be black it's nice guys and somewhere somehow i read they said black is beautiful so the show is basically the whole thing that we're doing here it's about celebrating who we are and be proud of who we are i mean it's so sad our kids now they want to look like i'm not gonna say you know why buy a weave when you can look beautiful and natural in your african afro Okay, so we're going to dwell much on those. We're going to talk more about those. We might even talk about hair as we move forward. I'm going to bring a guest here. Have a discussion. <laughs> I'm going to bring a guest here. Uh, we're going to have a discussion on different topics. It's either actor, 
um, you tell me who you want to have. So this is our first show, and I hope today you've got whatever you wanted, and I hope you've learned as much as I want you to learn. Uh, please teach me. Teach me, because I also want to learn. It's not about me knowing. It's about me learning and also sharing information. And I know when it comes to black people, we find it hard to share information. If there's a job vacancy out there, a black person will keep quiet and not call any other black person because they feel like ah, this person is going to come and take over. So we need to make sure that we share guys' information and we share as much as we can. Don't forget, guys, the name of the show is called Report Card. Report Card. Me and you will see each other on the next episode where I have my guest and we're going to be talking more about all the issues I've said today. Let's not forget to celebrate, guys. Mom Miriam Ageba, as you can see behind me, she's been standing there the whole time. If you didn't have a clue of who I'm talking about, I'm sure if you were watching the beginning of the show, you would have seen that we're going to be celebrating her on the segment of Heroes and Her Heroines. For me, DJ Mzugwana, your boy, filmmaker, uh, Luzugwaya Fele, owner of Lelaku Productions, uh, partnering with the guys from Deeply Rooted, uh, one of the working hard uh, guys. Um, so I'm very appreciating the moment, and I'm thankful for the fact that we're working together to push this art, and we work together to push this information. And I will see you next time, next episode, when we explore more on Report Card.